We're going to return to Canberra now, where the Australian Greens leader, Richard De Natale, is speaking to the media. National Party. I've been thinking a lot about leadership. It's a very uh, topical time to talk about what it means to be the leader of a political party. And I think the Australian community had high expectations for Malcolm Turnbull, as did I. I, I thought it was very important that we saw an end to the Tony Abbott Prime Ministership. And I welcome the announcement that Malcolm Turnbull would lead the Liberal Party because I was hopeful and optimistic that it would signal a change in direction for the country. And the really tragic thing with the announcement today that Malcolm Turnbull has struck with the National Party is we've got another politician, another leader, who clearly says one thing but believes another. I mean, he's a man who said he wouldn't lead a party that wasn't as committed to climate change as he was. He's a party who understands the science. He's a man who understands the science when it comes to climate change. And yet here he is backing in Tony Abbott's climate policies into the next election. How on earth can you be serious about climate change if you're going to back in Tony Abbott's climate policies into the next election? It's a policy that is derided by any mainstream economist. No one who has a skerrick of understanding around climate or economic policy believes it's the most efficient way to drive down emissions. They know it's expensive and it'll be uh, utterly pointless. So here's the great uh, disappointment here manifesting itself on day two of his prime ministership. To think that on the issue of water, part of the deal with the National Party is that he has gone even further than when Tony Abbott went. John Howard and Tony Abbott had the good sense to know that you couldn't trust the National Party to keep our rivers healthy. And that's why they ensured that it was managed uh, independently of simply the National Party interest and was part of the environment agenda. And yet here we've got Malcolm Turnbull handing over control of our river system to the National Party, something that John Howard and Tony Abbott would never do, uh, in an effort to try and ensure that he stays the Prime Minister of the country. We don't want politicians who aren't authentic, who don't believe in what they're telling the Australian community. That's why we're in the mess that we're in right now. And here we are, uh, a new Prime Minister, on those two key issues, the issue of climate change and the issue of how we keep our rivers healthy, effectively doing a deal with the National Party that goes against his own core beliefs. And this is a very worrying sign for the nation and for the direction of a Turnbull Prime Ministership. He's already suggested that um, he will back in Tony Abbott's plan to deny the Australian community uh, an opportunity to end discrimination in marriage. It seems that we are not going to have a free vote. We could have a free vote in the next session of Parliament and get the issue of marriage equality done and actually have a big win for Malcolm Turnbull and for the nation. And instead, no, again, a man who says he believes in ending discrimination, he's not prepared to put his neck out to ensure that, or to ensure that we end discrimination in marriage. So it's a huge, hugely disappointing day for what this means for where Malcolm Turnbull is taking the country. And uh, it speaks volumes of the problems that we as a nation are facing when you've got somebody who assumes the leadership on the back of a deal like this, who's beholden to the dinosaurs and climate deniers inside his political party, and he's unable to show the leadership that the country so desperately needs. Leadership is about having conviction and taking people with you, not staying with the climate deniers and the dinosaurs, the reactionaries uh, that might have uh, helped you ascend to the Prime Ministership. That's not what leadership's about. That's not what, what being a Prime Minister that this nation really deserves is about. And I just think it's a, it's a very disappointing day. He's off to a very, very bad start. Do you think that a lot I'll of just hand over to Rachel and, um, and to, uh, uh, to well, Larissa. perhaps to Larissa first I'm, and I'm then to Rachel. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Richard. Uh, look, we saw a huge backward step from the new Prime Minister last night in giving away responsibility for water to the National Party and to the agriculture portfolio. Now, this is the same party that have just appointed a big coal lobbyist to be their national president. And of course, uh, Minister Barnaby Joyce was not able to stop 
one of the biggest coal mines on some of the most fertile, uh, productive farmland in the nation as the Agriculture Minister and as the local member. I'm afraid uh, Minister Joyce, as Water Minister, certainly won't stick up for the environment, but nor will he stick up for farmers. He has well and truly sold out to big mining interests, as has his party, demonstrated by the election of their new national president uh, as a mining lobbyist and uh, demonstrated so frequently by Minister Joyce in his failure to stand up for his own patch. So huge disappointment there for anyone who knows that water is incredibly important in this uh, driest inhabited continent on the planet. Um, now likewise on climate we had hopes that there would be a departure from the weak and anti-science policy of the former Prime Minister. What an absolute heartbreak that the new Prime Minister has simply backed in Tony Abbott's climate policy. Uh, what, what a real letdown for the Australian people uh, and for anyone who knows that the rest of the world is beginning that transition to clean energy that could be so prosperous for Australia's future. So what a shame we see uh, just a, a new salesperson but the same old poor climate policies. I wanted to comment very briefly on agriculture and then some social policies. What we've seen by this capitulation to the nationals is a return to short-term decision making on agriculture and agriculture and water, failure to realise that we need innovation and broader thinking on agriculture if we are going to have sustainable agriculture in this country into the long term. We are failing to deal with the impact of climate change on agriculture. It's as if it doesn't exist for the Nats. They have never shown any leadership in this area by capitulating to the Nats in this manner. That is exactly what this Prime Minister is now backing in. In terms of social policy, I think a lot of Australians thought that Malcolm Turnbull was going to usher in a better approach on social policy. But what we have seen today is a reintroduction into the House of Representatives of the four week wait period for young people before they can access youth allowance. That is now a five week wait, that essentially is a five week wait period. This is the very measure that the Senate rejected just a week ago. And yet the new Prime Minister has introduced Tony Abbott's social policy. In other words, he's continuing their demonising harsh and cruel policies to the most vulnerable Australians, continuing the old lines of it's young people, they're slackers, they don't want to find work and we've got to push them and demonise them and push them to find work, when in fact their work isn't there. You talk to young people, they do want to find work. This is a flawed policy. It's, it's the third time that the Senate is being asked to consider a measure that keeps young people off income support. I'm very confident that the Senate will reject this policy, uh, this measure again, but it's a sign that the Prime Minister is not looking at innovation, not looking at a more compassionate approach to the most vulnerable members of our community. Um, uh, I was going to say, do you think that um, Malcolm Turnbull is actually playing a long game here? Maybe potentially after the next election, there could be a bit more. Uh, got it, Akish, got it. And maybe at the moment it's all about appeasing the party. Well, you can't appease the continent. That's the problem here. He's, he might be uh, trying to appease his party, but the climate can't wait. We're at a really difficult juncture at the moment. We're going to Paris to negotiate on the future direction for the globe when it comes to tackling climate change and we're going to take what are the weakest targets anywhere in the world when it comes to addressing this problem. I mean we are in dire straits. If we have a Prime Minister who thinks it's his job to appease his party rather than to act what, in what's the national interest. Like, what do leaders do? What, what is your job as a leader? Is it to try and um, manage those people inside your party room Whose, whose views belong in the last century, just in an effort to, to cling on to power, is that, is that what this has been about? Is that what this change over the last 48 hours has been about? Another lusting for power individual who's prepared to do what it takes and doesn't care about what he's going to do with that. That's not what... I hope that's not what we've, what we've just been put through um, over the last 48 hours. Now, what we need is, an in, is uh, leaders in this country 
who stand up and say what they believe in and bring people with them. And when it comes to climate change, you just can't um, uh, play a game that involves appeasing the deniers and the sceptics, uh, engage in what will happen in Paris in a way that dampens down global ambition, uh, and that in effect means that we're um, missing out on the big opportunity to do something about it during the, the, the critical uh, next few years, and of course denying ourselves the huge economic opportunities that exist. Uh, he's, a, he's a man who said that we need to have a, a new economic story to tell about the nation. You can't be serious about the economy if you've got no plan that is serious about tackling the biggest economic issue of our time, and that is catastrophic global warming. You haven't got an economic plan if your only plan to tackle global warming is Tony Abbott's climate policies. You just don't have it. And, and you know, it's interesting, isn't it, that you've got Tony Abbott who thought, in his words, climate change was crap, but thought it was important to give the impression of doing something. And now you've got Malcolm Turnbull, who actually thinks climate change is important, but he's backing what are effectively crap policies. <laughs> I mean, that's what we've got. Uh, you know, in the end, as a nation, we need, as politicians, to, to um, recognise that we have a responsibility not just to seek power for the sake of it, but to stand up in the national interest. And Australia's national interest is served right now by having a Prime Minister and a government that's serious about ta tackling uh, catastrophic global warming, that's serious about getting these progressive reforms like equal marriage through the parliament, that shows a bit more decency and compassion towards refugees, and that actually has an economic vision that's based on transforming our economy away from the polluting industries of last century to the new and innovative economy that will be created if we're prepared to tackle the issue of climate change. Senator, what's your reaction to Australian jets dropping bombs in Syria? Um, well, again, uh, a huge, huge disappointment that Malcolm Turnbull, who did have an opportunity to change tact on our unnecessary and dangerous involvement in Syria. The involvement in Syria is going to make a bad situation worse, concerns about whether it's, an, whether it's a legal intervention, um, and of course the concerns around civilian casualties, um, contributing to what is a very messy and complex um, uh, civil conflict and potentially exacerbating that, creating the breeding ground for terrorism. And, and rather than making Australia safer, it makes, it makes us much less safe. So, but, but he didn't really have any op option to get out of that agreement that's been reached with the US. Well, as the Prime Minister of a country, you make decisions, tough decisions, all the time. And uh, it's been my view, and it's the view of the Australian Greens, that we do have to have a non uh, aligned, independent foreign policy. And that was the Australian Greens leader, Senator Richard Di Natale, there, criticising Malcolm Turnbull's position on climate change and the deal with the National Party that transfers control of water issues from the Environment Department to agriculture.